uh, Anahida. I expected that um, I would hear about your nonprofit work and uh, I might learn a new thing or two about nonprofits, but my mind would be drifting the whole time. And that was the funnest lecture that I've heard in a while. Um, Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, I just um, don't so much have a question, but wanted to uh, thank you for your uh, courage and um, bravery, sharing about the awkwardness of uh, childhood and puberty and um, uh, the Iranian American experience. And I think uh, if you wrote a book, it would become a bestseller, at least in this country. I don't know about abroad, but um, oh, wow. at least in this country. You would read it. One say, I'd have one say. So have you thought about uh, writing a book? Well, my best friend is staring at me. Maybe she's an author, and she helps people write write their stories. So probably one day I will write a book, but um, I don't I don't think about it that way. I think it's really humbling actually to be up here right now because it's interesting how I I got selected to to chat today because Drew just thought I had, I was kind of cool or something. But um, <laughs> like, do I? What do I write about? Like in my brain, I'm like, would anybody read my book? Like I don't, I don't know. So uh, there's that awkward 15 year old peeking in again. So probably if I listen to Little Ani, I'd like to write a book. But it could be a picture book. It could be, you know, I could I could learn about creativity from from past speakers. Um, outside of your professional life, your marketing and and philanthropy. What do you, uh, what inspires you on a daily basis? What brings you joy? Just simple everyday things. That's a good question. She asked, what brings me joy in my everyday? Well, usually around the morning time, it's my cup of coffee. Um, it's Cameron's Coffee Highlander Grog, specifically. And then the creamer is Planet Oat Vanilla, um, because lactose doesn't work for me. So it's my cup of coffee every day. There you know so much more about me now. Um, but I love talking about like digestive system. Anyways, different story, um, different creative mornings. Uh, I just, I really am drawn to women and people from diverse backgrounds. Like I, and, and I'm not saying like the complexion of your skin. Tell me about you. Like wh what were you like as a six year old? Drew, did I not ask you that when we first met? And he was like, what? Like I wanna know about you as a little person younger version, I should say, not to offend anybody here, but then um, I, want to, I want to know more about like what people's stories are. So that draws a lot of inspiration. And then my seven, my almost eight-year-old, she's freaking awesome. I learn from her every day. The other night she goes, Mom, my heart is heavy. I'm like, holy shit, I was, it's 9.15, I'm too tired to do that, but like she is so emotionally intelligent that I learned from her. So that inspires me a lot too. Thanks for the question. Hi, Anahita. Hi, I always love hearing you speak. Um, my question for you is when you find yourself straying away from your six-year-old self, how do you get yourself back grounded to that creative, energetic little six-year-old Anahita? I think that that's a, such a great question. What brings me back to my six-year-old self when I'm like drifting away? I think every day I have to remember. Um, clearly when I was in a box looking all grumpy over there, <laughs> I was still having fun. So trying to find some sort of glimmer in every day. There are two quotes that I really, 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 there's a lot of quotes I love, but one of them is, don't let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace, and that's by Dalai Lama. And so anything, whether it's a six-year-old, the husband, clients, whatever, except for you, I love you, um, piss me off, I just have to kind of say like, do, why, why, like why is that annoying me? Just find some sort of inner peace, whether it's at yoga or truly just putting on music and dancing. Um, because that's so much of what the little Ani was, like she was so entertaining. And then the other thing is kind of silly, but I just, I'll go put on some mascara, <laughs> like put on a pink sweatpants or something, um, or music. 
but specifically it's, it's um, Persian Latin fusion. And that music comes on and you're like, <laughs> little things like that. Hi, Hi, thank you. Um, I'm a new parent, and so I've been thinking about this a lot, and mm. getting back to like your six-year-old or your younger self energy, and I'm wondering how are you as a parent encouraging your daughter to not have to get back to that? Like, what are you doing differently now, um, and what do you maybe <laughs> wish that your parents would have maybe done for you so you could kind of keep some of that? I know, right? Big question, big question, but... Um, how are you practicing that now as a, as a mom? Congratulations on parenthood. Um, <laughs> I'm sweating. Um, <laughs> my daughter inspires me every day. But sometimes, bless her, the little therapist that we've been working with, which everyone, especially kids, need a therapist. It just, we, I've, been, I've been reminded constantly that I have no control over this child. I can guide her, right? And I think what worked really well for me that my parents did an amazing job at is letting me just be who I was. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that I did that I kind of don't let her do, like color all over the fucking dolls and markers and, and walls and shit. But American dolls are expensive, you guys. Like, we can't, it's just, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so I love letting her be her, and then when she's in her element, like a creeper, I just stare at her sometimes, and I'm like, oh, man. One of the most profound things of motherhood was when she was about um, like 12, 13 months old, and she was outside, and she was like following this ant. She followed this damn ant all around the sidewalk, and I sat on the ground, and I followed the ant with her because she was still, she was like, there's, we lived in St. Paul at the time, so there's noise everywhere. But in that moment, it was just so sweet and peaceful, innocent. Then the other thing was airplanes. Every time an airplane went by, which now we live by the airport, so it's like I'm just always staring at the sky. Like, how does that not fall down? Anyway, so little moments like that remind me to go back to that point. Um, but also to really embrace so much of who she is. She's similar to me. We have a lot of similar characteristics. But she's so different. She's so much more courageous, so much more brave than I ever was. And so, the other part of your question about what, something about my parents? <laughs> That's a different slideshow too. Okay, she said leave it there. Hi. What would, you, what would your advice be to someone who feels like they don't know what their six-year-old self was like? I'm not sure that I could sit here and be like, oh, I was this, this, and this. And so I'm like, oh, how do I find, short of I need to go back to my mom's house and find some pictures of myself when I was six. That's what I was doing last night. Um, you know, like what, I don't know. How would you try to find, go back and find that six-year-old self? Can I tell you a secret? I was actually five in that picture, but now I just, <laughs> I just fucked up the whole presentation. <laughs> Shit. Um, I went with S because it was RISE and I needed an acronym and I was sweating on Wednesday. Anyways, so little self, little girl self. So does that mean four? You might not have money memories until you're like nine. So if there's any little bit of you today, like how would you describe yourself to the person next to you? But not like titles, hobbies. It's like, tell me about you. I'm on a Hida champion. I'm very curious. I'm bold, I'm playful, and I'm very compassionate. And if you just think about a couple of words, it might take you back to that little version of you. Could be like 25 years old, I don't really know, but <laughs> don't grow up, that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> You want to sing Hello by Adele? No, I'm just kidding. Um, thank you. Hello, it's me. Um, I did a little studying on Persia, just so happened. I'm part of the DEI committee at Dairy Queen, and I chose this documentary, Happenstance. I learned that Persia, they were talking about it at the time, was extremely, they're crea it's a creative country. It's so. So I guess um, what I'm curious about is how 
did your creative inf did did you get creative influence from your family, and how creative is it on on just a general level? Is 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 it still that way today, like how it was when it was Persia? Just the storytelling and what's that name of that one book? The the book? No, it's Rumi? A, no, no, it's the book of all the kings, and it's called. Persepolis, Hafez. No. But, yeah. I'm so, a really yeah. good Persian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember it either, so. So, yeah, how, how, how's the influence um, generationally trans, transfer, I guess? My gosh, you guys are coming with these profound questions. Can we just, like, have a group coffee afterwards? Maybe, or a beer? Shit, it's Friday. Fuck it, you don't have to go back to the office. Um, thanks, Lisa, for that. Um, my dad is a professor. He teaches at a couple of different universities in science and anatomy, physiology, microbiology, all the things that I don't know how to say. Um, my brother is an eye doctor in Lakeville, advanced family eye care, <laughs> Dr. Cameron Arar. Uh, my sister is a dentist in Orange County, and my mother, who I didn't know until a handful of years ago has also a background in interior design and working with youth. And her father was a photographer for doing PR photography for the Shah before the revolution. I know. I didn't know that until I was like 35. So influence I woke up like this. I don't know, I guess I was like, I just, I was so different. I felt like, holy shit, you guys, I didn't even think about this. I, for years, was trying to blend in with my own family. Like, I'm not scientific. <laughs> you can be. I don't like, like, I like numbers in my bank account, but I don't like equations. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I just think I've had a little bit of a spark, but learning more of that in the last five to 10 years has been so transformative. Um, Iran as a, as a country is extraordinary. Don't listen to any of the shit you see in the media, except for the fact that women are leading the revolution right now to hopefully become a free country, uh, minus all the Islamic Republic oppression. Thank you. Shout out. It's so beautiful. I mean, it has some of the oldest architecture in the entire world. Um, turquoise, jewels, you name it. Food is the other thing that I wanted to say. Shout out to my podcast with my friend Lisa. We have a podcast called Life in Our Skin, talking about stories from women in the middle between the white and the black communities. Episode three is probably one of my favorite. We talk about food and the influence of what food, music, spices, and, and, and textiles just brings us all together. So if you're sitting at the table and you're asking someone, you know, tell them about you, and then you're talking about, oh my gosh, this khurish karafs, this celery stew is so damn good. You start talking about different things that bring you to, food brings people, to pe people together. So that's a lot of responses to your question, but there's that. <laughs> <laughs>